Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through my Stephen King collection. I have my shelves arranged chronologically and I'm going to go in reverse chronological order starting with the most recent shelf because um, the collection gets more interesting the farther back you go. So I'll start with the very common, very recent stuff and work my way back. The most recent shelf in my collection includes first editions from 2014 to now, 2022. So it covers the Bill Hodges trilogy, Mr. Mercedes, Finders Keepers, End of Watch, on through Fairy Tale. There's a lot of good stuff on this shelf, and there's some not so good stuff on this shelf. I'm looking at you, Gwendy Trilogy. Um, I'm a completionist. I would feel really weird if I had a hole in my collection, so I collect everything. Um, this is kind of a fun piece. The Bill Hodges trilogy in a single slipcase with the spines that went together um, make the smiley face icon. It's pretty cool. Those are not first editions, but the three um, next to it, the standalone editions, are firsts. The next shelf goes back to 2004. It's our first editions um, of this decade, uh, starting with Faithful, which not being a huge fan of baseball, I'm not particularly interested in. I have to admit I have not read it, and of all the books in this collection, it is the one I am least likely to actually read. I only have a few left that I haven't read. Uh, Faithful is on that list. But because it is so different, um, nonfiction essays about baseball, I, I think I can live with that. Um, the Colorado Kid, when it was first released, was released as a mass market paperback original. That's kind of an interesting, interesting item. And the taller edition next to it is the illustrated edition um, from just the last few years. Storm of the Century, uh, first trade paperback, and a uh, Book of the Month Club hardcover, which I believe was the um, first hardcover edition of the book. Cell, I am reading now. I'm about halfway through. It gets a really bad rap. I like it. I like it okay. Lisey's story is um, the one I have yet to read, and I'll you know, I'll do it. It's next on my list. I'm actually a little intimidated by it, but I know a lot of people who really like it, so I look forward to digging in. Um, Dreamcatcher, I recently read. Also, um, one that gets a bad rap, but I actually really enjoyed it. It reminded me a lot of sort of EC Comics with the sci-fi horror elements. A um, lot of talk of bodily functions, which was kind of gross, but also kind of funny and even liberating after a while. Um, it is the book that has forever lodged the term shit weasels into my vocabulary, and for that I am eternally grateful. I know there is a, a variant of Under the Dome that has white lettering. Uh, I need to seek that out and pick that up. This is, of course, the variant that has black lettering. And... 11-22-63, top 10 Stephen King overall for me. I would consider it a masterpiece. I know he had considered writing it when he was much younger and said that he had to take the time to grow into it so that he would be ready for it. Um, it was brilliant. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Um, Joyland, another um, hard case crime original also really liked that in the slipcase is the illustrated hardcover it's not the limited edition hardcover just the illustrated one in a cemetery dance slipcase dr sleep the sequel to the shining um the shining is my favorite stephen king novel and i was a little worried about dr sleep how could it possibly live up but i really liked it it doesn't eclipse the shining but it stands alongside it as a really worthy companion piece. And Revival, another great um, 2000s 
uh, era Stephen King novel. I'm a big fan. He mm -hmm. is writing good stuff um, these days. Some people feel like his writing has gotten weaker as he's gotten older. It's more polished. It's less jagged. But to me, um, he had some pretty crummy things back in the golden age, and he has some pretty amazing things now. It's a little hit or miss. But there's that shelf. Next door, we get back into the 90s with Nightmares and Dreamscapes. First editions going through from a Buick 8. Um, I have the first edition paperback set of the Green Mile over on my paperback shelf. This is a plume omnibus edition in a slipcase. It's actually the first uh, version that I ever owned. It's pretty nice. Um, two variants of Insomnia. They look really cool together on the shelf. I didn't realize it never dawned on me until just the last five years or so that there were variants. Um, and at first I thought it was kind of silly, kind of overkill to get both, but then when I put them side by side, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. Um, Desperation I read when I was a teenager and really liked it. Regulators I only read just in the last year or so. Um, it kind of gets a bad rap, but I also really liked the Regulators, and I wish that the cartoon vehicles that come to life in the book um, were actually real life toys that you could buy because the power wagons um, are so cool, so cool. Bag of Bones, Hearts in Atlantis, the um, jump to Scribner, a couple of um, classic Stephen King works right there. I read Bag of Bones uh, years ago, really enjoyed it. Hearts in Atlantis is another recent uh, read to me and while it is um, different and it has um, sections, really long sections and really short sections. Overall, I did really enjoy it. And I like how the books are sort of complement each other with their design and their style. Of course, the famous On Writing and Black House in there, the sequel to The Talisman. Everything's Eventual and From a Buick 8. I read From a Buick 8 when it first came out, and I remember a very, very effective set piece um, with a, an alien with a single black eye that comes out of the car, but other than that, uh, the book didn't leave much of an impression on me. I wouldn't consider it classic Stephen King, but like everything he wrote, um, it is decent. Moving back to the 80s, and early 90s. And this is the time frame at which I started collecting first UK editions of Stephen King books. And everything on this shelf is represented by a first US and a first UK edition. I've gotten up into the early 90s, um, may keep going at some point, but so far I haven't felt compelled to do so. Um, the first U.S. Eyes of the Dragon and the first U.K. Eyes of the Dragon I have housed in homemade slipcases that are very rough on my very first attempts at creating slipcases, so I won't pull those out to show them off. I will feature them in another video at some point in the future. But the first, the U.K. dust jacket images are really solid in this time period and really give the US ones a run for their money. Um, two variants of the US Tommyknockers, gold and red, gotta have both. They're pretty cheap to find, so it's not a big deal. Um, the UK Tommyknockers has by far the better jacket image. The US jacket image is probably one of the worst. Um, that's another book that gets a bad rap from, St in, from Stephen King himself. But um, once I got past the first third or so, really, really enjoyed the Tommyknockers. Um, perversely, as I've been going through and making sure that I've read everything in the catalog, the stuff that a lot of people find to be classics don't resonate as much with me, and the stuff that a lot of people 
hate or don't consider to be very good, I actually am kind of enjoying. Um, Dark Half, Four Past Midnight. Four Past Midnight, I'm generally a fan of the novella collections. Four Past Midnight is my least favorite novella collection. Um, I thought The Langoliers was decent. Library Policeman, I really like. Um, the other two, The Sun Dog, just seemed like it took however many pages. It felt like a thousand pages, but like 150 pages uh, to say something that could have been said in maybe 15 pages. It just seemed like it went on forever um, and just not my favorite collection. But the uncut version of The Stand was the first version that I read in college and I absolutely um, adored it. I was convinced it was the best thing I had ever read. I tried to go back and reread in the last couple of years the original cut and I guess the story was just too familiar with me, but or familiar to me, but I um, I didn't finish the reread. Kind of ran out of steam on it. Um, needful things. I would consider that to be a Stephen King classic. Um, a lot of people feel like his classic period sort of ended in 87, Eyes of the Dragon, Misery era, um, right before he cleaned up his act. But like I said, there's good stuff, there's great stuff in every era. Um, Gerald's Game is, I think, an underrated uh, Stephen King masterpiece it not only from a uh, has a female uh, main character but has the extreme limitations of setting and scene and yet he pulls it off brilliantly i first read that one um, also when i was a teenager i haven't read it since but it looms large in my um, esteem of the stephen king catalog so books are not the only thing that I collect. I also collect um, gadgets and gizmos and toys. So bear with me, but this is more back in the classic era of Stephen King, the generally accepted classic era. Um, this shelf covers actually not a lot of time, 1983 to 1986, but it was obviously a very prolific period for Stephen King. Um, shout out to my sister who made this Pennywise baby doll that she gave to me for Christmas a couple years ago. Um, it is one of the coolest things I own and it is a badass present to have received. But the first US and UK editions of Christine and Pet Cemetery, the um, Land of Enchantment hardcover edition of Cycle of the Werewolf is a grail of mine. I do not have it. I understand it is the first edition and I do not have it, but I do have the first uh, printing plume or signet paperback, as well as the first printing paperback edition of Silver Bullet, the which includes Cycle of the Werewolf plus um, the screenplay for the movie. Uh, Cycle of the Werewolf, not one of my favorites, but it is probably the greatest story I've ever read that was originally intended to be printed on a calendar. Um, Talisman, Thinner, Skeleton Crew. I'm not such a huge fan of these short story collections. I mean, they're fine. I do like the short stories, but the novellas really stick out to me. And Skeleton Crew includes one of Stephen King's best and most famous novellas in The Mist. The Mist has been released as a standalone edition so the fact that it's included in Skeleton Crew plus tons of other stories is just an embarrassment of riches for a single cover price. Um, my Bachman Books is actually a second printing. It's a first edition second printing. Um, I lucked into it at a bookstore in the last year or so for $25. I was ecstatic. I have yet to see a first, um, a 1-1 one, one in the wild. And when you look them up on eBay or other booksellers, they are hundreds of dollars. So it is one I will continue to search for in the wild, but this is as close as I've gotten so far. And the um, yellow Bachman books is the omnibus that was released uh, in conjunction with the regulators. 
the last one to include rage as part of the contents. And then of course, um, iconic, definitely top three Stephen King for me in It with my first US and first UK in slipcases from the Casemaker. Uh, the US I got for $9 at a bookstore. It is near mint. I was ecstatic to find it. Uh, the UK was I think 35 or $40. So great deals on them. And the Casemaker cases are really nice and worth the investment. Um, Cause I think the book alone would be worth more than what I paid for it, plus the cost of the case. So that is a good investment in my book. And then back to the beginning, the absolutely iconic, um, if he hadn't, if he had stopped writing after the stand, would probably still be held in high esteem as a great uh, horror author of the 20th century. Um, but my double days, as I mentioned in a previous video, are not first editions, but they are authentic priced double day editions that replicate the first edition uh, design and attributes. So I really like looking at them on the shelf. Um, the UK carry is just a facsimile dust jacket on a US book club edition of carry. Um, the Bachmann's, um, it was pointed out recently that these books were um, revised and updated before they were published, so they don't actually belong in these spots on my shelves. I have just yet to yet to fix them. The plume paperback um, editions from the 90s of Stephen King's earliest books are the first three, and then I think they did uh, Dead Zone, Firestarter, and Cujo as well are really nice as far as paperbacks go. Um, I have had these for years and years and years. Um, they are high quality and they include images of the original uh, dust jacket art, which is pretty cool. The Salem's Lot Illustrated Edition is an interesting piece. I think the insides are the same as the very massive um, centipede edition of Salem's Lot that is mythical in Stephen King collecting circles, but I got this one when it first came out, um, paid list price for it, probably around $30, and it's a really handsome edition with some cool special features. And then first UKs and US of Dead Zone and Firestarter, the first US of Dance Macabre, because the UK one is nearly identical, and extremely rare and very expensive. So I have been satisfied with the first US edition thus far. And then first US and UK of Cujo and different seasons and more um, toys because that's just the type of person I am. And my bizarre um, Trevor Wayne, Stephen King related art I'm a big fan. These made me laugh and they made me happy. So I picked them up because that's what it's all about. I do have my Dark Tower collection on its own shelf. It fits really well on one shelf. Um, by the way, the shelving that I use is IKEA Ivar shelving and it's brilliant. Um, really, it's lightweight, but it's really strong. The shelves are very adjustable. Um, every shelf that has books on it, I have lined with contact paper. But if you're curious about the shelves, I just thought I would give a little shout out to Ikea. So I don't have the original edition of The Gunslinger, either in first, second, or third printing. Um, even the third printing now is pretty expensive, so I have held off um, picking that up, but I do have the first uh, edition, or the first version, the original version represented in this plume paperback, and the revised um, and updated edition represented in a paperback and in a hardcover uh, from Viking. 
So moving on from there, drawing of the three wastelands and wizard and glass are all um, Grant first editions. Drawing of the three is one that I bought when I was a teenager. The jacket had some issues with it, so I put out a call to see if anyone had a replacement jacket, and um, David from Bet's Books reached out and he actually sold me a brand new dust jacket for Drawing of the Three, and it is, it is brilliant, and I'm absolutely thrilled to have that in my collection. And the plume paperbacks are my go-to um, reading copies or glance through copies. Wind Through the Keyhole is the Grant Artist Edition uh, from, from recently, just recently sold out. I think they had it available for quite some time. And then um, Wolves, Song of Susanna, and The Dark Tower are the books I initially purchased when they first came out and which I um, actually read. So while they're not rare or valuable in any way, they have sentimental value to me. Um, Song of Susanna and The Dark Tower are artist signed editions by Grant and I am um, always on the lookout for an artist edition of Wolves of the Cala at a great price. But that's my Dark Tower shelf as it exists today. Stephen King's magnum opus. And then we move on to the limited editions, the special editions. Um, this is the more recent shelf of those. It's the Grant, um, the Grant gift edition of Desperation, the gift edition of Insomnia, the um, signed by Peter Straub um, box set edition of Black House and Talisman, very handsome looking, the Levidian um, edition of Revival, which is such a cool book. And if you haven't been following Levidian, um, they are well worth following and checking out. They are doing some amazing work. The absolute beast of a special edition of Sleeping Beauties. This is the gift edition uh, from Cemetery Dance. Three copies of Later. Two of them are the unsigned special editions um, from, my uh, gosh, I guess 2020. Um, or was it 2019? I can't remember at this point. And then the uh, third copy in the blue case is my signed numbered edition. Uh, the only signed Stephen King book I own. I was actually very fond of later, so I'm glad that if I was gonna have one signed book, um, I could do way worse than later. Secretary of Dreams, the gift editions, volume one and volume two, such unique and cool books. I will be taking a deeper dive into those in a future video. But man, they are massive, illustrated wall-to-wall -wall by Glenn Chadbourne. And in my opinion, the bigger the medium, the better his work comes across. And it comes across very well in The Secretary of Dreams. Sandwiched in between, for safekeeping, is my first edition of Creepshow. Recently acquired German language edition of It, or S as it is in German. Um, I don't speak German, so I feel a little ridiculous about this one, but the image on the front of the book and the cutaway on the slipcase is just too cool to pass up. And then tucked away back there um, Charlie the Choo Choo and the pop-up book version of The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. And my last shelf in the video, first shelf in my collection. So this is um, the early, early stuff as represented in some special editions as well as some stuff that's into the 90s. So the um, gift edition of Carrie by Cemetery Dance, the um, numbered edition of Carrie by PS Publishing. This one is actually my only book that has a remark in it, 
which I'm pretty proud of. My artist signed edition of Salem's Lot from Cemetery Dance. This one I actually won as a prize on a Facebook group contest that's devoted to rare Stephen King. Um, it is one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. One of the nicest books I own and it is a very proud addition to my collection. The absolutely essential um, gift edition of The Shining by Cemetery Dance has some amazing special features. Um, well worth seeking out and picking up. Um, the Folio Society Shining, the gift edition of Night Shift, the numbered editions of Dead Zone and Cujo from PS, the gift edition of Talisman from Grant, two volumes and one slipcase, really sharp, Misery from Folio, and then Misery from Suntup Editions, also one of the nicest books in my collection. And next to that is the three volume in one slipcase edition of the Tommy Knockers by PS Publishing. Um, I love that they created such a lavish special edition of this novel as it is generally not regarded as one of Stephen King's best I think there's something perverse about the level of art, artistry, and workmanship that went into bringing this to the market, and I absolutely love it. This was the uh, $20 Barnes & Noble um, leather, or pleather, fake leather bound edition of the stand with gilded edges. It was, it's a cool looking thing. Um, it's not valuable, it's not rare. But it is really cool, and for 20 bucks, I mean, how can you beat that? And then finally, the recent um, numbered edition of Needful Things from PS Publishing. I've been reading, or trying to read, uh, Stephen King my whole life, since I was a kid. My grandma was a big fan, and she got me started, and I've been... Um, seriously collecting Stephen King um, for probably 20 years or so, or 25 years um, since I was a teenager. And every day that goes by, I learn more and more um, my collection. I, I have had the privilege of seeing pictures of other people's collections that are just epic and decades in the making. And this just scratches the surface of the um, special editions, the limited editions that are out there, that are available, the variant editions. Um, I've seen people collect paperbacks. I've seen people collect every single edition that was ever released internationally of their very favorite single title. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, it's all about what makes you happy. Um, and... I have seen people that have multiples of things. I certainly have some favorites in the collection, but just as a matter of practicality, I don't have the shelf space. also don't have the budget. I have tried to acquire the best quality editions that I can of my first editions. Um, start with the US, go along and pick up the UK, um, and I've been working up to the 90s. With that, I may continue um, on. I would love, I mean, obviously the Double Days, the original, the first five Double Days are a huge um, gap in my collection. And I should have tried to jump on those books uh, 20 years ago when I had the chance because now they are extremely valuable and um, priced out of reach. But... I do stop at bookstores, thrift stores, um, church basement, um, charity shops, just randomly um, on a regular basis. And I always have my eye out for that diamond in the rough that I lack from my collection. And I have actually had some good luck over the years finding some amazing deals. You just sift through boxes and boxes of stuff and then blammo, there it is, and they want, um, you know, 50 cents for it or something. 
and those are the types of finds that keep me going. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you taking the time. I hope that this has been interesting. It's very self-indulgent for me to do a guided tour of my collection, but um, I do appreciate you uh, for watching, and thanks a lot for your time, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.